Pseudorite and Novelcrafter have easily risen to the top in terms of AI writing tools specifically for fiction authors. There are other tools out there, most notably Rexy over at Future Fiction Academy, but Rexy is kind of in its own category in terms of what it can do, and so I'm not going to be comparing it to Novelcrafter and Pseudorite right now. Now, just so you know, I actually earn a lot of money from my Pseudorite affiliate. But I also want to be very upfront and honest and genuine with all of you. And so I've made a decision that if I can, as objectively as possible, measure these two tools against each other, I will stand by the results. So if Novel Crafter is indeed better than Pseudorite, I will tell you. Now, I, obviously, all reviews like this are somewhat subjective, but I'm going to try and do my best to be as objective as possible. And so I'm going to be grading here on a tally point system based on various categories. Here are the things that I want to look at that I think are important for authors who want to write books with AI. First of all, ease of use. Is it easy to use? How well is it tailored to authors? How involved is the community around that tool? How well does it take your input like story bible information and other input ab around your book and be able to interact with the AI in, in interesting creative ways? How well are you able to make in-text modifications and changes? And what about full chapter generation? Is there a way to basically push a button and get an entire book out of it? And of course, customization. We want to make sure we have something that is easy to mold and customize to our own specifications. And last but not least, price. How well do, do they stack up next to each other in terms of price? So with all of that, let's go into the first category, which is ease of use. So this is probably the most difficult to rate objectively, but if you come in here to Pseudorite, everything is pretty easy to look at here in Pseudorite. There's just a few instructions here. Like once you kind of get used to what all of these things mean, there really isn't much to it. You know, come here to brainstorm and you get what this is, right? You're brainstorming dialogue, characters, world building, etc. It can get a little bit more complicated but generally, like if we come down here to Story Bible, you know, you know what to do in these spaces and what you don't know, they clearly spell out for you. And so I give Pseudorite definitely an A plus for for that. If we look at Novel Crafter and go to the right section, there is a lot more going on in Novel Crafter. And I wouldn't necessarily say that it is better or worse in terms of ease of use, but there is a lot more and it can definitely seem a little bit more overwhelming. I don't necessarily know a good way to get around that because like I said, it can do a lot more than Pseudorite based on everything we can see here but it has a lot of the same features here, but it's just laid out slightly differently. And for instance, if we were to come in here and put a new entry into the codex, like this could just be overwhelming to people because there's just so many things and like, well, what do I do with all these things? And, and again, I don't know necessarily a good way of getting around that without removing features, but I will say for ease of use, I would probably have to give that point to Pseudorite. But let's actually take a look at what, what do authors actually need to write fiction? There are a couple of things that are important. For one, being able to read information that you have provided about your world, about your characters, all of that stuff is something that fiction authors need, but also a tool that can be highly customized and put to get, well put together that can do a whole lot of things and allows you, the author, to really bring your own skill level uh, not just with writing, but with using AI. And again, this is one of those things that's harder to quantify, but I do think that as a useful tool, Novel Crafter knocks it out of the park. Novel Crafter does everything that I need it to do to write a fiction book. It even has one of my favorite features, which is the chat. Now on the surface, this looks exactly like any standard chat, like ChatGPT or Claude. But what you can do here that you can't do in those platforms without extensive prompting is you can add this context window and feed it your full novel outline or a scene or your full novel text, which can only be done with the large models. But this is just one example of a feature that is extremely useful for authors. It saves you a ton of time. So you don't have to be copying and pasting those things into a chatbot. And also, Pseudorite doesn't have this feature. 
And it's a really useful feature. Uh, now, of course, now that I've said that, I'm sure Pseudowrite's gonna start working on that on something like this, but I do think it's a very useful feature to have here. And that's just one example of one of the things that I think Novel Crafter does better in terms of actually creating something that is tailor-made for authors. The developer of Novel Crafter clearly understood the author community when she built this, and it it does a really fine job. Pseudorite, on the other hand, you know, they tout themselves as being done by authors for authors. But having met some of the founders and stuff, uh, I I get the sense that they're really more Silicon Valley people. And and that's not to say that they, they don't have a passion for authorship and everything like that, but that's not their main focus, like their main career. They they are not as highly invested in the author community as I would hope. And one of the ways I can see that is sometimes, and this happens a lot with Silicon Valley and venture capital backed companies, you'll just see features for features sake, right? Uh, they're just coming up with something because it sounds cool. And a good example of that is the brainstorming. The brainstorming, you know, can sound like a useful feature on the surface, but the way authors actually brainstorm using AI is a lot more along the lines of, I think Tony Stark talking to Jarvis in the first Iron Man movie, where it's just sort of bouncing ideas back and forth. That's why a good chatbot is very useful. That's why this chat feature here in Novel Crafter is very useful. But here, like if we were to just like brainstorm characters, yes, this can be useful. It can give you some ideas, but honestly, this is not the best way to do brainstorming, if if you're asking me. These are not utilizing the prompt. Like, I've done a video on some of the advanced prompts to use for brainstorming. This isn't the kind of thing that it does that. And then brainstorming also just requires a huge breadth of possible prompts. These are using specific prompts that they have created that cannot be tailored. And brainstorming really is more of a back and forth where every single time it's going to be different. And so you can't have a way to, you can't have a single prompt that works for it. You can have starter prompts to get you going, but then you really need to be chatting with. It. And that's just one example of something I don't really like. It's like, okay, on paper, that sounds like a good thing, but is it actually tailored for authors? Do these people really know the author community? And I really get the sense that although I 100% know that the developers of Pseudowrite are trying and they're trying their hardest, I think Novel Crafter really hit it out of the park when creating something that was clearly meant for authors. Another option that I'll just show off real quick here is export. The ability to export a lot of these things. Novel Crafter just makes it a lot easier to export your project in various ways, not just the text, but also maybe your outlines or other things like that. So that's just my thoughts. And uh, I think Novel Crafter definitely wins in this category. The next category is a community. Now, um, the community around both Pseudorite and Novel Crafter is very, very good. And it's done mostly through Discord servers. And uh, you can easily find those through their documentation and everything and on their websites. But both of them have very active developers, very active users and ambassadors and other people that just use the platform. It's a great place to get tips, to find like new ways to do things, to get questions answered. Both of them are very, very good, and I've been in there. And also, both of them, I should point out in my Discord, the Nerdy Novelist Discord, we have places to talk about both of these tools there as well. And honestly, I can say the the communities around both are very wholesome, very helpful. And so I'm going to give this one as a tie to both Novel Crafter and Pseudorite. All right, the next thing I wanted to take a look at is like, how do they handle the story Bible, right? So a story Bible, if you're unfamiliar with the term, is basically all of the stuff that forms the background information of your novel. And these existed long before AI, but they've become especially useful in the era of AI in order to kind of clue the AI in on the context of what it's writing. And I'll show you what this looks like in Pseudorite first. So here's like a manuscript. And then down here, we have the story Bible. You can put just a brain dump of random stuff, uh, some information about your genre, which is limited to 40 words, some info on your style, which is also limited to 40 words, 
Uh, and then you can add a synopsis. And the idea behind this is very similar to my fractal technique where you start small and then slowly expand and expand. Uh, but then you have characters. And here I have, this is not very clean, which is uh, my fault here, but here you have information about different characters. It's like a paragraph for, for each one. And this is where you put information on the, on the characters. This is really important so that the AI is able to get information about these people right and get personality quirks and things like that that might shape how they talk, how they communicate, how they reach their goals, etc. And this is all just added right here. But there is also a, a 700 word limit here as well. So you need to make sure these are short enough or you don't put all of your characters here, etc. And then from that, you can generate an outline, which looks something like this. And from there, you generate story beats, etc. Now, one thing you might know, even though this is called Story Bible, this is not actually a Story Bible. This is more of a pseudo write specific feature that they're calling Story Bible. The only thing here that is actually Story Bible-like is the characters, right? Having information about the characters, but there's no place to put information about your lo different locations or objects or lore or whatever else you wanna add here. You can't really do that. Really, it's just the characters that you can do here. Now, in Novel Crafter, you have this thing called the Codex. And here, if we were to click New Entry, you're given an option for character, location, object or item, lore, or other and other is just any anything you want it to be basically uh it can be tailored for anything plus you're able to have a global entry kind of the the same idea as other but something that is globally received across the entire book same with style guide and story genre which is similar to those same sections that you saw in pseudo -write. But there are some massive differences here. For instance, you know, for starters, you have access to locations, objects, lore, etc., that you don't have in Pseudorite. Also, there are no word limits, right? So you're able to put in as many words as you want into this short summary here. And you can add aliases and nicknames that they might go by if we were doing a character, for example. Uh, other lit tags and labels. You can also add notes. These are things that will not be sent to the AI, but might be useful for your own reference, which actually makes this whole thing useful, not just for AI writers, but for any writer. If you just want to put notes about your characters and just tag them somewhere, you can put this here. This is another reason why I think this is really well tailored for authors because they're understanding not just the needs of the AI, but also the needs of the author. And having a place to just put random notes that you don't necessarily want the AI to know, but are useful for you, the human, you can put that here. Also, you can do a bunch of other stuff that's not really important for this video, but a lot of flexibility, a lot more that you can do. And what I love about the what the way Novel Crafter does it is if we go to write and we were to start writing a scene beat, as you're writing the scene beat, it will detect within the beat if you are referencing any specific character or object or place, and it will automatically pull in that thing specifically for that scene that you're writing. And what that does is it actually cuts down your cost because we don't necessarily want to dump the entire story Bible into the AI in order to write just one scene or one part of a scene, right? Because not everything is necessary. And the way AI works is it will often take everything you've done, given it and try to find a way to incorporate it somehow, even when it's not supposed to be incorporated in that scene. And so you really want only the characters that are in that scene to be fed into the AI. The way Pseudorite does it, all of these characters here will be fed to the AI. And so if you don't want these characters, say this character here, Arthur Homeward, say this character isn't in the scene, then you would want to take this out of, of Pseudorite's story Bible here because otherwise there's you run the risk of him being incorporated into the scene even though you didn't ask for it. And so you kind of have to manually copy and paste these out and have like a separate file outside of Pseudorite to keep track of everything. And it could be really convoluted. With Novel Crafter, you don't have to worry about that because it only pulls in what you have referenced in the scene beat, which is extremely useful. I cannot tell you how important that is. And another reason why I really like Novel Crafter in this particular instance. So for when it comes to story Bibles and the way it processes information, Novel Crafter hands down 
wins on this one by a long shot. It does a tremendous job with the codex and keeping track of information. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about is it's in-text editing. All right, so let's say like this paragraph, we just don't, don't really like it. And so we want to figure out a better way to do this. You can click expand here in Novel Crafter, rephrase. If we click rephrase, you can select which model you want. You can configure the prompt here. Same goes for shorten or expand. You do the same thing with all of that. And so you have all of these different options and they're somewhat useful. In Pseudorite, if we look at the way Pseudorite does it, we select the paragraph and we have rewrite, describe, expand, visualize. A lot of these are the same in function or slightly different describe for example gives you various five senses so you can ask it to do the sight smell taste sound touch these again are useful in on paper but in practicality aren't actually used that much uh, other than to just get ideas so you might look at this and say uh, okay like i don't necessarily need to smell this but you know, you generated some ideas there uh, same with sound touch you know all of these things might be useful to look at for brainstorming purposes, but you're not actually gonna be using this, right? Which is why I think Novel Crafter doesn't actually have that feature. So they, they do have some features that, that, the, that the other doesn't, and they both tend to do okay in terms of what authors usually need this for, which is to expand. If I were to expand this, it just naturally fills it out a little bit more and you can uh, apply it, retry it, discard what it did. So if I wanted to apply it, I'd hit apply. And yeah, this is okay. And if you wanted to really configure it, you can configure the prompt here to make it a little bit different. So really it's kind of the same for both. There's some things that one does better, some things that other do better. So I'm giving this one as a tie to both options. All right, let's talk about full chapter generation. So the way Novel Crafter works is you give it a scene beat by doing a forward slash and, and selecting scene beat. And this can be like a paragraph that you put here and then you hit generate prose and it gives you a couple hundred words, usually around 400 words or so from that scene beat. And then you can edit that up and then give it the next scene beat and it'll do that. It'll read the what you have written already. So it'll be able to read what you wrote and edited, uh, which is good because then it will be able to match the same style within reason and continue on. The way Pseudorite works is you come over here to this chapter generator, you input your scene beats, all of them in one go, at least all of the scene beats from a certain chapter, and then you go down here and you generate the, you, you can generate it in various ways. You can do most accurate, best pros. These are all using different models. Uh, and then you hit, well, in this case, it's, it's continue or restart, but you can just hit generate prose. I'm just going to hit restart here and it gets started here writing the scene and I can pause it and it'll finish generating the beat that it was working on. And once it's finished generating the beat, you can fix that up and generate the next beat, or you can let it just run and generate the whole chapter at once. There are a number of problems to this because generating the entire chapter caused the AI to get sidetracked and kind of veer off course. And it requires a, lo a lot of editing on the back end. To do it one step at a time requires less editing when you're done because it's reading what you just wrote and you're kind of fixing it up as you go, which means it gets better as you go, as it's able to read everything that you've written in the past and edited. So it doesn't get sidetracked and you're only, but the downside of that is that you're only doing one beat at a time. Whereas with Pseudorite, you can in theory, get everything all at once. I have found Pseudorite's ability to write a chapter all at once to be about as good as can be expected but honestly, not very efficient. And the way Novel Crafter does it, I think is a better way to do it. However, I'm grading here on its ability to actually write a full chapter at once and Novel Crafter isn't able to do that. So I'm gonna give the point to Pseudorite for this one. However, keep in mind, I actually don't think that this is an efficient way to write, to do one whole chapter at a time the way you do it in Pseudorite. I honestly think the way Novel Crafter does it is better. And there are actually better ways to use a model like Claude 2.0 
to generate the entire chapter at once, which is the method that I used in all of my live streams, which you can check out as well. So on the whole, giving this one to Studio Right, but I think Novel Crafter actually kind of does it better. All right, next up we have customization. So how are we able to customize these tools to fit our specific needs? Studio Right has a number of features that you can customize. But most noticeably, we have plugins, the ability to basically create your own prompts to be used within the text however you want. And you can also use prompts that other people have created as well. This is not a feature. The, this plugins feature is not something that Novel Crafter has currently, but I understand it is in the works. Uh, however, let's say, for instance, I just mentioned that I don't find this way of generating the entire chapter at once to be very effective. What if you could rewrite the prompt and get it to be better than it is here? And so you could actually make it more effective for your purposes. That is unfortunately something you cannot do in Sudorite. You cannot modify the prompts that they are already using on the back end. Same goes for like brainstorming here. If you wanted to modify these prompts that they're using on the back end, you can't do that. The same goes for models. While there is some level of customization, so for instance, if we're generating the pros, uh, there is experimental access to a variety of different models here that they tell us about Goliath, Ariboros, Mythomax, and Mistral. And also we have up here most accurate, which is GPT-4, best pros, which is Claude 2, balanced, fastest, unfiltered. These are all different options here. So there is some level of, of customization that you can do in terms of selecting the model. But let's just say it could be a little better here. The best customization you get in Sudorite is with the plugins. But with their actual prompts, for instance, like the rewrite prompt, the describe prompt, those are all, you cannot access those. With Novel Crafter, it's an entirely different story. First of all, if we were to generate prose, you can select from any number of models as long as you have hooked Novel Crafter up to Open Router and OpenAIs through their API system. It's a very simple process. I've covered it in another video, but that gives you access to pretty much every single model out there that you would want to use, which means if you're just hitting a specific section and you're kind of stuck, for instance, if you're writing a scene that is not safe, safe for work and you've been using GPT-4 the entire time, and GPT-4 won't write it, you can immediately just switch to a different model and, and go from there. Additionally, if we go look at the prompts here, all of these are the system prompts. Every single one of them, you can clone it. It'll now say like in this one, expand copy, and you can rewrite, you can rewrite what the prompt looks like. So that can all be modified here. And you can also adjust, which is something you can't do in Sudorite, and you can adjust what the temperature looks like. If you want that higher or lower, the top P, max tokens, etc. All of those things can be modified here within these prompts. So everything is pretty much customizable here. Additionally, you have access to this chat, which I've mentioned before, which is sort of, it's not really customizable per se. Well, it is because you can add more context settings here, but you can also, it just allows for more flexibility if you just need to chat with the AI for a little bit to, to work some things out. All of that's available here. I've already shown off the codex a little bit, all of the different things that you can add to uh, really make those pop and make them interesting and customize them to your own needs. For instance, adding notes that only you need to know, but are useful just for having having them stored in a place, right? So all of that to say, Novel Crafter is hands down the winner for customization. It does a phenomenal job allowing you to customize your prompts or the models that you're using or things like the temperature and the top P, all of that can be modified within Novel Crafter, which puts it high above Sudorite, in my opinion. That is a major feature that Sudorite lacks. Now, just to defend Sudorite a little bit, I think the reason that that is the way it is because they were trying to keep things simple for their authors. But now the authors are starting to get a little bit more wise to AI. I think it's time to add some more advanced features into Sudorite to allow a lot more customization because that's really going to be necessary because every author is different. Every author has different needs. You need to have 
a way to change things and tailor them to authors. All right, last but not least, let's talk about pricing. This is going to be the deciding factor for a lot of authors. And let's start by talking about Novel Crafter. Uh, Novel Crafter, in order to host everything on their servers and everything, they do have to charge something. And so uh, you can start with as little as $4 a month. And this is billed monthly. If you do annually, you'll get two months off. So that's $40 a month annually or $40 annually, but we'll just stick with months for now. So you can start with the $4 tier. I would suggest at least the $8 tier, the Tinkerer tier here for all of the features that I've showed off so far. But really the $14 tier might be the one you wanna go for. And then of course it can go up to $20, which gives you everything, but most authors will probably not need the $20 tier, at least not until you have really exhausted everything that you need to do it at the artisan level or the tinkerer level. These are more for if you have whole series or universes or you want to collaborate with other people, you might need the specialist tier. So let's just take the $14 tier example here. So it's a hundred or it's a $14 a month, or if you did annually, that's $140 a year. And this gives you pretty much everything that I've shown off so far. You could also go slightly less. However, this is not the only price to using Novel Crafter because what Novel Crafter does is it brings in a, your API for Open Router or OpenAI's Playground to use those to actually generate the words because if you're not familiar with the way AI generation works, every word that you generate costs a tiny bit of money to do and how much money is dependent on what model you are using. So some of the beefier models like for instance, GPT-4 32K, one of the most expensive models we've had so far. And it costs a lot more to generate like a paragraph than say one of the open source models. And what Novel Crafter does is it connects your API to Open Router or OpenAI Playground so that you are charged per word that you are using. The good news is this is a minuscule amount, right? Uh, you can hook the, all of these things up and really you could generate a full novel for probably less than a couple of dollars. Uh, even if you're using larger models like Claude 2, my guess is you probably wouldn't use more than a couple of dollars to generate say 50,000 words, right? And so it's very likely that you will spend probably less than $20 a month, even if you're using this $14 tier. It all depends on how much you're using it. If you're using the open source models, some of those are even free. So if you're using the free ones, it, you wouldn't be charged more than this $14 a month. Now let's look at Sudorite on the other hand. So Sudorite has three tiers and they go off of a credit system. The $10 tier gives you when billed monthly, the $19 tier gives you 225,000 credits a month. The middle tier at $29 gives you a million credits a month. And the max one gives you 2 million credits a month. The max is also interesting because those unused credits will roll over for 12 months if you don't use them. What they don't tell you here is how much is that going to cost you. And I can guarantee you it's going to be more than what you do with Open Router. The difference is that Sudorite gives you a maximum amount of credits and then you use them up. And when you use them up, they're gone and you don't have any more for the month. You would have to purchase more, which Sudorite does give you the option of doing. Also, you can't really know how many credits are being used because again, it depends on the model. A GPT-4 model is going to be using a lot more than a open source model. But as I've already pointed out, they don't have as many options when it comes to open source models not one compared to what you can do when connecting open router to novel crafter plus at this 29 dollars tier that is twice as much as the 14 dollars tier and more than three times as much as the eight dollars tier that novel crafter has now granted if you are using novel crafter heavily you will be spending more than 14 dollars a month but you also know that it's going to depend on your usage so if you're not using it much let's say you're using the $8 tier. If you're not using it that much, you're not going to be billed, you know, very much for it. Other just this small amount to keep the servers running at Novel Crafter. Whereas with Sudorite, you don't really know where that money is going. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? And even if you have rollover, that's only for 12 months. And I guarantee you that the amount that Sudorite is siphoning off for themselves 
they are taking a small percentage of every word that you generate and the money that you're spending for these for those credits. Whereas with Novel Crafter, the folks over at Novel Crafter do not take anything out of the AI words that you're generating. Every time you generate AI words, you're being built through Open Router or through OpenAI's Playground, not through Novel Crafter. So the only thing that Novel Crafter charges you is this amount right here. All that to say, I think Novel Crafter has the better model here. It's a little bit complicated both ways, and it kind of has to be a little bit complicated because there's different costs to each model that you use. But on the whole, I think the way Novel Crafter is doing it is the best way to go, where you're just paying for the Novel Crafter platform. That's all you're paying paying for. You're paying for the server spaces. You're paying for the developer and other people that are employed at Novel Crafter to help bring it together. You are not paying for the AI words that are actually generated. You are not paying for those at all through Novel Crafter. You only pay through novel for the AI words through Open Router or through OpenAI's Playground, which as I've mentioned, is really not a whole lot. You have to really be using the beefier models heavily in order to rack up a whole bunch of cost there. For most authors, the most you would be spending is a few extra dollars a month, most likely. So let's say you really push the limits and you spend $10 a month. Even using this higher end tier from Novel Crafter, that puts you at $24 a month total, which is still less than the $29 a month here. I guarantee you, you can get more out of Novel Crafter in terms of AI words than you can out of Pseudorite. So basically, Novel Crafter is my winner for pricing. Now, if you're keeping track, that tells you that Novel Crafter is my choice when comparing the two. I believe that Novel Crafter is a better AI tool for fiction authors. Now, let me just quickly add a caveat to this. I do think that Pseudorite is good for people who are just starting out, who really don't know what they're doing, because it does, it, it is a little bit easier to use. It is a little bit more tailored for that very beginner AI user who just wants to try it out and see how it works. It can be really good for that. Novel Crafter is a little bit more advanced, but is capable of so much more, as I've already mentioned, and I believe it's a cheaper, more affordable option for most authors. I fully intend to write my next book in Novel Crafter and not in Pseudorite. And I'll just add one more caveat because this is the world of AI. Everything is advancing at a super quick rate. And so I may change my mind about this in a few months. That's just the way things things work. You know, Pseudorite might come out with some new features that make it amazing and maybe Novel Crafter stalls. This actually happened last year. There was a tool called Verb, which I was very excited about when it came out. I re actually really liked Verb quite a bit. And then they haven't made any real progress ever since they came out, which... To me, it's just like, you know, I've seen Pseudorite get a whole lot better. I've seen uh, Novel Crafter give it a whole lot better since it was first in beta. These tools and uh, obviously the models that are powering them are uh, very fast, very quickly adapting and advancing. And we're just going to see this continue throughout 2024. And so I will probably remake this video <laughs> later in the year or next year because things do change and they change rather quickly. But for now, Novel Crafter is my pick as the best fiction writing platform between uh, it and Pseudorite. Now, obviously, fiction isn't the only type of thing that you want to write with AI. And so if you want to learn a little bit about my entire AI writing process, go and check this video out because that video will give you a more broad overview of everything that you need to think about with AI, not just how do you write fiction with a tool like Novel Crafter. So go check that out. I'll see you in the next video.